Well, hey, y'all. I'm Marcy. I'm the curly-haired half of the Handmade Heralds, and I'm here today with your trend report. That's right. I've got my pencil and my paper. I know last week I was completely off base with leg warmers. It could come back around because everything comes back around. Scrunchies, my friends, have come back around. They actually came back around in 2020 and they've stuck around for 2021 because hasn't it all just been one super long, never ending year at this point? Scrunchies for the win. A quick Google search gives us big scrunchies, little scrunchies, scrunchy headbands. Who, what, where says oversized embroidered organza scrunchies are extra hot and I'm extra here for that because as a big haired girl, bigger is better. And that's what we about to do. Let's go. The Chrome Dome half of the Handmade Heralds, Rob, is on leave for today's tutorial. He's got an absentee note. He's got an excuse. He doesn't have the locks necessary to wear scrunchies. And I really, I did him pretty dirty in that leg warmers video, didn't I? Didn't I, y'all? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let him take a pass this week while we play with our hair. We're gonna be making three versions of scrunchies today. This sensible, simple cotton scrunchie, this scrunchie headband, and this sheer oversized scrunchie. This is a long video, so I've time stamped it so you can jump to any scrunchie that you might want to make. I've actually had a lot of requests for these from people who are just learning to sew and who maybe don't have a machine. So you can do these with a machine or without a machine. And what's cool about scrunchies is you don't know it, but just as with leg warmers and masks, I'm Mr. Miyagiing this stuff for you guys because what you're learning here with all these little itty bitty things we're making is how to sew an actual garment and when we get back to new york which is probably happening very soon and i'm in my space with all my accoutrement we're gonna make some wide leg pants we're gonna make a circle skirt we're gonna make some clothing so let's get into a scrunchie so we can get into an evening gown okay all right, let's do this. For this tutorial, you're going to need fabric remnants, scissors, safety pins, something to mark with, needle and thread, a ruler, a headband, if you're making a scrunchy headband along with me, and elastic. Almost any kind of elastic will do. This is a soft black buttonhole elastic. This is a regular old half inch elastic. And this, this is comfort elastic. You know, maybe you've got 40 yards of mask elastic just sort of laying around because um, you've made enough masks at this point to last you for the future when you may still want to protect the face when going outside or maybe when feeling sick and you just want to be kind to other people by throwing a protective layer on, maybe you still want to do that. I know I still want to do that. At any rate, maybe you've still got some mask elastic laying around. This is a great use for that. Using up what you got, folks. That's the name of the game. This particular remnant that I have here is four inches wide by 28 inches long. Because you want that fabric to scrunch up when you put your elastic in. I've got some half inch wide elastic that I'm gonna use and that is seven and a half inches long. So cut your elastic to whatever size you're used to your hairband being. If you got thinner hair, finer hair and you use a hairband that's about that big, you know, just measure the diameter of one of your hair bands lying around and add a little bit for seam allowance, okay? Sewing term, seam allowance. First up, we're gonna take our scrunchy fabric and my fabric is saturated on both sides so you can't tell the right side from the wrong side. That's a great thing about wax print fabrics. But you're gonna take your fabric with the right side facing up, 
So we're gonna call this the right side of the fabric and fold it so the right sides of the fabric are together. If your fabric has a bad side to it, the bad side will be showing right now. And then you're just gonna sew up this long edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Magic of YouTube, magic of YouTube. Got that seam stitched up at a quarter inch seam allowance and the two ends are left open. We're gonna take our safety pins and just pin through one edge of the tube, insert that pin back down into the tube, and pull the fabric over the safety pin. It's a little tricky at first, but once you get it started, you just keep pushing that safety pin down into the tube and pulling the fabric over the inside. Now you've got your tube right side out. That seam is hidden and you've still got your two open ends. Here's where we get to scrunch it up and attach our elastic. I've got my elastic. I actually cut it to eight inches because I got a lot of her. I'm gonna pin one end of the elastic and insert that into one end of the tube. And when you get to the other end, pin the elastic to the tube, because you don't want that elastic going anywhere. This is what's gonna scrunch it up. Now go on ahead, feel for the inside where your pin is, and just keep shimmying that other safety pin all the way to the other end of the tube. Now we're gonna take our two ends, being sure to hold tight to that elastic, don't let that go nowhere, match those ends together, and we're gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance through all of those tube ends including the elastic on both sides. We're gonna use a French seam here. Do you guys remember a French seam? That's right, a French seam that I used on my garment a couple videos ago is exactly what we're gonna use for this scrunchie. Sewing is just steps and time. We've all got a little bit of time right now, haven't we? Yeah. You got all the layers stitched together. Trim that up. Fold it in on itself. And then we're gonna stitch it again at a quarter inch seam allowance. And there's your first scrunchie. Right? She's so cute. Feeling good as a little bracelet. <gasps> I need to make like seven more of these. Okay, I'm gonna make like seven more of these, but right now we're gonna move on to the next scrunchie, the headband scrunchie. This one's gonna be like a little wax print tiara crown for our heads, okay? Let's, um, let's get to marking up this one. Okay, we've got our wax print, we've got our headband. I picked this up at the dollar store. It was in a pack of three. Love me a dollar store. We're going to take our fabric, and again, I'm using wax print for this one, and I've got this nice big piece of remnant right here. This was from the end of a dress. This was from the hem. So again, it doesn't have a wrong side on it, so pay attention to my words and not necessarily the look of the fabric if you've got a wrong-sided fabric. You're gonna take your fabric and you're gonna fold it right sides together. So right now, if you've got a wrong-sided fabric, the wrong side of the fabric is showing and the right sides of the fabric are touching and folded together. So fold your fabric however long it is. You just want it long enough that it's gonna have some scrunch, just like this one, right? So you're folding it long edges together and then fold it again just like we did in our mask video, right? We did the hot dog fold and then we did the 
hamburger fold. We're gonna make an oval shape by drawing this sort of an arc from the edge here, all of these raw edges, up to the tip of the fold there. And I'm starting about half inch above the edge. Now we're gonna trim away through all layers on that line that we just drew. That's gonna be a huge scrunchie. That's what I want. If you guys don't want that big of a scrunchie on your fabric folds that we just did a second ago, all you would do is make that arc less extreme. But I want it big. We're gonna sew up all the way along this raw long edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All stitched up, those two ends are left open just as on our regular scrunchie. Once again, we're gonna take our safety pin and pull that whole tube through. Take our dollar store headband and start to thread it through, keeping the seam on top of the headband because the seam is the curved part. Thread one end of the tube down to the bottom of the headband and throw a safety pin in there. We've reached the other end. We're gonna throw another safety pin in. <laughs> you can see she's starting to look like a scrunchy headband, only of like ginormous proportions. We maybe didn't have to go quite this wide, but you can see the concept. That's the concept right there. I'm gonna look like a brilliant peacock. Let's get my hand sewing needles out and just stitch these two little ends together well, not together, but on either side of the headbands. You stuck them together, you would no longer have a headband. Cool? Cool. I'm just going to fold the fabric in on itself. Again, I'm not being too finicky about this. It's just a scrunchy headband. And I'm just going to whip stitch these ends together. Oh my goodness, how cute is she? Now, what you could do if you want these scrunchies here to stay in place, whip stitch all the way around the headband through all these layers, or really you could just zhuzh her. I mean, I feel so, I feel so trendy. Don't I belong on the online pages of who, what, where, of cult of fashion? of it TikTok girls. Look at this, look at it, look at it. If you wanted, you could even stuff this before you sew it up with batting or something like that. If you want that nice sleek look that our poet laureate had at the inauguration, mm -hmm. she had a fabric covered headband on. It was just sleek and not quite so <laughs> whatever this is. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do our last one. <laughs> This guy is gonna be long. You remember this little, this little sensible scrunchie was four inches wide by 28 inches long to begin with. This one's gonna be four inches wide by about 40 inches long. And that's gonna give us our maximum scrunchiness. So here's my right side of the fabric. You can tell because the embroidered leaves are so very pretty on this side. And here's my wrong side of the fabric. You can tell just by looking. So we're gonna place the fabric right side up, fold it so the raw edges meet. And once again, we're just gonna stitch along this long raw edge. 
We can machine stitch this or we can hand stitch this. And I'll tell you what, hand stitching this is going to take forever, but if you don't have a sewing machine, that's how you're gonna do this. What's great about this embroidered mesh is that it won't fray on the edges, so you don't have to worry about finishing these edges. The edges are gonna be enclosed. What you're gonna do is, with a single layer of thread, not a double, because that'll knot up on you real quick in this fabric, is just start whip stitching this closed. You come from underneath the two layers, pull up, lay your thread down again and come back up from underneath the two layers, about mm, a quarter inch away. And you're just gonna keep on sewing as such. And you wanna try to keep it, keep your stitches even all the way. You see how I'm coming up right where I left off on the last stitch. The same, the same plane, the same line, because you want your seam allowance to be even. And that's how you do it if you're hand stitching it. It's no big deal, it's just a scrunchie. Right now, I'm gonna save myself some time and go machine stitch the rest of this seam. All right, that seam is all stitched together. Again, I used a contrasting thread so you can see that seam stitched together. Let's go to the end of our tube, and now you're gonna be able to see the actual pulling of the tube through itself because it's sheer. You take your safety pin, you put it through one end of the tube, let that safety pin take a dive bomb back into the tube, and start to tunnel the fabric into itself. Now you can see you're pushing the safety pin through, squeeze the pin, and pull the fabric over itself. So you see how that tube is starting in there? That's all you're doing. That's what we did on this guy. And there you go. Just keep trucking. Just like I've supersized my fabric on this scrunchie, I'm also gonna supersize my elastic. I'm using a thicker elastic and a longer elastic. I'm using black elastic here because it matches our fabulous black mesh embroidered scrunchie. I think I just lisped my way through all of that, but I'm gonna go with it. Same deal here, and you're gonna be able to see what's going on because it's see-through. Take our Safety pinned elastic, insert it into one end of the tube. We've got this other end right here and we are going to, just like with our sensible scrunchie, pin the elastic to the tube at this end so that this elastic will stay put while we thread the rest of the elastic through the scrunchie. Again, you can see your safety pin there. Just keep pushing that safety pin down and pulling the fabric over the elastic. We've got our elastic on the other end of the tube. Pinch the tube around the elastic and pin all of those layers together. All right, we've got that pinned up. Match those ends together. We've got all of our ends pinned together, including the elastic. Once again, we're gonna take out our hand sewing needle and sew right along here. And I'm gonna use the same contrasting thread so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going in between the layers and pulling my knotted thread through to hide that little knot. And then I'm just gonna go again from underneath the fabric to the top, lay the thread over, underneath the fabric to the top, lay the thread over, 
This doesn't have to be the prettiest stitch in the world. All you gotta do right here is make sure you're catching all layers of both tubes and definitely catching your elastic when you get to those elastic bits because that is what is making your scrunchy scrunchy. And just for a little extra security, I'm gonna flip her over and I'm gonna whip stitch one more time that away just to be sure I've got my elastic enclosed in there and I've got all my two bends together. And you could machine stitch this, of course you could machine stitch this, but I wanna show you how to do this with hand stitches. You know, in case you don't have a machine at home, in case you do maybe have some younger adults at home, some young humans running around that maybe need a crafty break, need a little something to occupy their hands. This is something you can do with them without having to pull out any heavy machinery. You can make this headband with them. You can make the sensible scrunchie. You can make this organza frilliness without a sewing machine. Just a needle and some thread, some scissors. I mean, yeah, there's sharp objects involved in this for sure. So you're gonna wanna do some supervising. You do wanna have eyes on the littles, but this is gonna be super fun for them. Now you've got your first seam done. You can actually leave it there if you want to because this mesh isn't going to fray. But if you're doing one of your sensible scrunchies that is going to fray, cotton will fray, other fabrics will fray. You're gonna do just what we did on the machine. Flip the seam to the inside, fold right along that seam line. And now we're going to stitch this seam closed. I'm going to use a back stitch. Take your needle and thread it from the bottom of the fabric to the top, a little bit away from the end of the seam. Pull that through and now sink your needle right at the edge of the fabric. For your next stitch, take your needle, sink it from underneath the fabric through to the top about a quarter inch away from that first stitch, pull it through, and then sink your needle right where you ended that first stitch. See now how you have two stitches nicely touching, just kissing, that's exactly what you want. Push your needle from the back of the fabric up to the front, pull it through, sink your needle right where that stitch ended. And repeat for the entire seam. And I'm stitching far enough away from this seam line so that I'm enclosing all of those original whip stitches that we did. And there's your line of back stitches. Just gonna knot this off at the end, again, make your loop, push your needle through the front of the loop, make your second loop, push your needle through the front of the second loop. Slow pull closed. You can do this with scraps of fabric in the house, with old t-shirts, with old shirts, with anything that you're thinking, hmm, I'm gonna Marie Kondo that. Condon't that. Make that into something joyous for yourself and your small humans. Let's finish up this seam. She's so floaty and pretty. Let's just see what, what we got here. I mean, I don't know that I'd walk all three at once. Or would I? Let's put her in the front so we can really see what she looks like. Oh, she looks good as a bracelet too. Doesn't she look good as a bracelet too? I'm really just so happy with just everything that's happening to my life right now. I feel like a unicorn princess. Maybe I've hated that term before and now I understand why people love it, because that's what I feel like right now. I'm gonna go and make like 18 more of these, because 
because this is so much fun. I promise you that we are getting to full on garment tutorials coming up. And any of y'all who have emailed me about saying, can you teach me something super simple like scrunchies? Yes, I can. But what you don't know is you are learning how to sew clothing. And when I get back to my home base with my equipment, it is on. We are gonna have some full on garment making. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Peace out, emphasis on peace. Stay sane, stay happy, put some color in your life, even if it's a little bit scrunchy. Bye y'all. I also look a little bit like little Bo Peep. She's a little, little Bo Peepish. <laughs>